What's up, everybody? John Henry, Both Sides of the Conversation. Today was our second annual uh, Both Sides of the Conversation Black History Bowling event. Powerful event. Over 455 people who came out and supported today. Great event. We gave out over $15,000 in prizes. We blessed the people today. Shout out to all of our amazing sponsors that continue to just impact the work that we do to impact community. This event means so much. Bringing community together, bringing organizations together, supporting each other, uplifting the voices of the people, bringing joy, happiness to the black community, dreaming forward. That's what we're doing. Both sides of the conversation, uplifting the people, changing the narrative. You talking about changing the narrative? That's what we do. We bring the real things that's happening in our community to the people. Uh, bringing black people together, bringing excitement, you know. Uh, we really appreciate this, my kids right here. You know, we appreciate family and the ability to just celebrate, you know, what we represent with no, without no limits. So uh, we had an exciting time today. Bowling was fun. The, uh, the essays was fun, the rewards, and just thank you for having us. Yeah, exactly what he said. Uh, I just I just love when people give away, to spe especially the black community. I just love they express how they feel and just give away money. And the kids got money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hi, it's me, Iman. It, it had very good tacos and and I have so much fun bowling and catching money. Hello, my name is Tiana Gramillion. I'm the board president for both sides of the conversation. How y'all doing? My name is Devin Ward and I am a youth panelist and a marketing intern. Hey, I'm Deja Ward. I'm also on the youth team and the marketing team. So for me, it was a great opportunity to serve the community along with my children and my family to be out here with everyone celebrating both sides of the conversation, second annual African-American Black History Bowling event. We gave out some awards um, to community ambassadors and community heroes. We blessed three children with $500 in a plaque for writing an essay. Um, so it was good to just to see everybody enjoy themselves. Oh, I also want to mention Jada Love's um, essay. essay. Her essay, Bullets Have No Name, that was good. I heard that. Very, you know, emotional, mm -hmm. powerful. I want to thank John for uh, inviting us to this platform and allowing us to connect with the community and be here and be a part of it. It's always a good time. Yeah, you know, I'm all about the black community, about helping, all about service. So I do like getting out here and seeing people be positive or seeing our people be positive. Hey, Ford. Uh, I'm the founder of the San Francisco Rebels here to support John and his bowling event today. It's always good to see a, a bunch of uh, people from all neighborhoods to come without no drama, enjoy themselves, have a great time. I think this event that John Henry puts on every every year should be, you know, supported citywide every year because um, he does a great job with it. So I'm proud to be here. Happy also I got an award as well. Okay. I'm June, I'm with the uh, Human Rights Commission. I'm with the Dream Keeper Initiative, and this, this event was an absolutely fantastic, enjoyed it, community came out, we had a good time, we need more support like that, and we all support them. Hi, I'm Valerie, I had a good time too, bowling, eating, the music was out of sight, enjoyed the day, very much enjoyed Beautiful. Both sides of the conversation. Let you join, hear me. Nobody doing better than us. Shout out to my guy, Marco, man. Always catching the footage of everything that's going on. Shout out to Don Cannon, all of our sponsors, all of my both sides of the conversation team, our youth team showing up. 
and to the community. The bishop love y'all, man. Both sides of the conversation, all power to the people. Come follow, see what we're doing. platform and for highlighting all the great work of Black San Francisco. Obviously, I want to also accept this on behalf of the Dream Keeper Initiative and the amazing work of the Human Rights Commission, Dr. Davis, Dr. Leal, Dupu Birch, and all of the HRC. Thank you all for your work and for your commitment to making sure that our organizations, that our communities are able to thrive. Thank you, John Henry, for this award. I appreciate it. And we're going to keep doing the work together as a community. Thank you.
for her poetry. Finally, the first African American president of the United States, Barack Obama, and Kamala Harris, the first woman African American vice president of the United States of America. In conclusion, as I celebrate Black History Month, it makes me proud to be an African American. The African American community have grown from protesting in the streets for equal rights and not being able to sit at the front of the bus to the White House. As my ancestors have fought to provide a path for me to have equal opportunities, I stand proud to be an African American boy, knowing that I can do all things and nothing is impossible. Working hard, being humble, believing in God, and doing my best I can reach my full potential. Excellent job, right? You did a real good job, and we all proud of you. One of the things you, you got to realize, this is a very important award, especially for me, because my best friend, my cousin, lost his life on the job eight years ago. And I just want you to make sure you understand that one of the things he taught my brother and I was bringing people together. And I'm glad to see everybody come here together, because that was something he taught us, and now you're bringing us together with your words. So it's a powerful thing. So on behalf of my cousin Jerry Gordon, I want to present to you the African American History Essay winner for 2022, Jonathan Butler. Come get your money, young brother. I'm vice president, but I'm here. Yeah. Yeah.
So in honor of my mom and your African American history essay writer, I want to present this to you as a winner for 2022. Alright. And here is your money, young lady. And they be lying on both sides of the conversation. We do bless the people! My community has watched the lives of so many people, young and old, have their lives taken from gun violence. You can see how the news brings people to tears until they become numb to the constant and con rather continuous news of who just got shot. Bullets rain out at random where I'm from, but the routine of ducking and running was one that I knew my community had known too well. July 4th of 2020 was one of those days that made kids and teens all over the Bayview remember that bullets don't have names. Jace Young was a six-year-old killed from gun violence in Bayview. I remember the way that the family fought for justice and so many fought alongside them whilst in agonizing mental states. He was only six, yet those bullets took such an innocent young soul away, but bullets don't have names. I hate guns, but not everyone feels the same. And just as much as someone would hate guns, they use them to protect themselves from other guns. Pretty ironic, right? It seems the cycle was designed to target communities of color, being that Bayview Hunters Point houses many African American, Pacific Islander, and Asian American people. Someone gets killed, threatened, or injured, so then people carry more of those same firearms that threaten to kill or injure. You can't blame them. Many can't even trust the law enforcement that supposedly holds others accountable. So I'm going to use this time to also hold the police accountable because back in 2015, a 26-year-old man was killed, Mario Woods. Mario Woods was holding a bloody knife at the end of that bit, and he was shot more than 20 times by police officers. And I understand that a crime was committed, but over 20 times is literal overkill. Many overlook the trauma that gun violence brings at such young ages. Loud pops that make people drop to the floor for cover thinking it's a gunshot. Being afraid of being caught in the crossfire of a gunfight that has nothing to do with you, or even knowing that a loved one has used it to take away their own life. It pains me to see my community that has become so used to gun violence that they aren't even phased. Some see a person be shot dead right in front of them. They just describe exactly what happened and what they saw, but with no emotional expression at all. Do you see the picture that I painted for you? The gun violence that shatters families, steals the lives of children, and traumatizes everyone that it directly and indirectly affects. And if you haven't ever been affected by gun violence, put yourself in our shoes and think about how it would feel if you lost your kid, your father, or even yourself. You would never know because bullets don't have names.
Julius Hollins on both sides of the conversation, co-host and the actual production director. Hey, That's I'm it. the co-host here, Jocelyn here. I'm just supporting here the community. It is amazing. Yes, yes it, it is. It is lit. It is live. I'm telling you, people come here with good energy. It's all about the community. Make sure we are Absolutely. sharing the resources with people. So it has been a lit and live event. I don't know. What do you think here? The second annual voting event. I mean, the community, there was lines down the actual walkway. We've had them come in. They have subscribed and liked on our YouTube conversation. Both of the conversation they've come in they show total support they've taken pictures at our booth and they've entered we had three essay contest winners they were here they performed they read their essays and it's been miraculous it's been an amazing day now and on top of that there was a lot of gear given out there was hats there was t-shirts and Hoodies. everything representing both sides of the conversation you got to get this out, out to the community to the community both sides of the conversation and we will see you next year